Hi, I'm Matt Lindsay. I'm the Quality Assurance Manager here at Chemical Solutions. And today I'd like to talk uh, with you about the topic of PQL, or Practical Quantitation Limit. Uh, it's a common question that we uh, receive here at Chemical Solutions. What, it, what is a PQL? What does it mean? Um, how, do I, how does this uh, relate to my results? And so today I figured I'd go through what a Practical Quantitation Limit is. And so the first key, I think, to understanding what a, a PQL is, is to understand the other concepts of detection limits. There are two other um, ones that we use here at Chemical Solutions. They would be the concept of an IDL, an instrument detection limit, and an MDL, a method detection limit. So let's talk about the first, most basic uh, one, which is an IDL. An IDL, as I said, is an instrument detection limit. So it is the smallest amount that the instrument can actually see or detect of an analyte. Um, it has no idea how much it sees of that analyte, the concentration that it, 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 is, it is present in. It just knows that it detects something. And so that's the IDL. And that's a very important thing to know because that's where basically your baseline is, you, you know that something is there, but you just don't know how measurable or how large it is. An IDL uh, is defined at Chemical Solutions as the concentration equivalent of three times the standard deviation of seven reads of a blank of DI water. So that's how we're going to calculate, or one way we're going to calculate an, an IDL. The next uh, detection limit would be an MDL, or a method detection limit. Uh, the method detection limit is defined here as the lowest concentration of an analyte that can be detected with 99% confidence above the background concentration. So in essence, when you move to an MDL, you're now saying you can see something and now you can estimate with 99% certainty how much of that you're able to see what the concentration is with 99% certainty. There's still a little bit of uncertainty. It's an estimated value. And so it's not something that you would want to quantitate and report that value and say, yes, I definitely know that there's this much of an analyte there in the solution. Um, one way that we calculate MDLs here at Chemical Solutions is by uh, the equation of three times the standard deviation of seven readings of the lowest calibration standard. Uh, that's a common way for us to calculate an MDL. So the last thing and the topic of the moment is the PQL, the practical quantitation limit. This is really related back to here because as de by definition, it's going to be at least a minimum of two times that MDL. The other definition, the actual um, definition that we use here would be it's the smallest amount of an analyte that can be quantitatively determined with suitable precision and accuracy under normal method conditions. So at this point, we're able to report to this value. We are certain that there is this much or not this much amount of an analyte in a solution. These things are, are good to understand in terms of the verbiage and, and the definitions, but hopefully what I can uh, help with understanding is to illustrate this in some layman's terms. So uh, for instance, say you're standing on the top of the M Empire State Building and you're looking down and you see all these people walking around the streets of New York City. This would be sort of analogous with the concept of an IDL. You're standing up on the top of the Empire State Building. You can see that this is a person down here, but that is really all that you can see. You have no idea anything about that person. You, can, you don't know their gender, their race, their ethnicity. You don't know how tall they are, how wide they are. You just know that that is a person walking around down there. This would be sort of synonymous, as I said, as the IDL. Now let's say you're up on that same Empire State Building And instead of being up on the roof, you're going to go to 
the 60th floor, and now you're going to look out at those same people. And now you're going to start to be able to see a person, and you're going to start to be able to see their gender. That's a man, it's a woman, um, maybe their race. Uh, you're going to start to be able to see characteristics of that person. That sort of would be synonymous with your MDL. Now you're able to see a little bit more about that person. You're able to estimate some things. Um, so that would be sort of your MDL. The last concept would be your PQL. And again, you're at this same Empire State Building, but instead of being at the 60th floor, you're now down here at the 30th floor. And now you can start to see these people and you're starting to be able to see their height. They have curly red hair. Um, you're able to measure that this one is five feet tall. That would be synonymous with a PQL. Now you're able to start measuring those people. You're starting to be able to say with certainty that this person is five foot tall, that this person is six foot three inches tall. That's the idea of a PQL. So it's, a, it's an arbitrary number that the laboratory uses to establish with confidence that your result is a certain concentration. So that wraps up the idea of a PQL. If you have any additional questions about PQLs or any other topic, please don't hesitate to give us a call or um, send us an email. We'll be happy to assist you with your question. Thank you.